Okay, mixing. This is a new project. We imported all the audio tracks that we exported before from the composing uh, project. So what we've got here, it's audio, it's nothing, there's no MIDI, no samples, no libraries. Separating, composing and mixing helps a lot gaining clarity. Uh, not, not sonic clarity, but rather a visual sort of uh, when we're organizing our project, we have to work, when we have to mix, it's going to be much easier. Instead of having 200, 300 tracks with a lot of MIDI regions now, or like, you know, complex routing. Uh, in this project, we just have, you know, few like 15, 20, 30 audio tracks, uh, which are enough for, you know, that they'll give us enough flexibility. But in the other half, we will have it, it's going to make it cleaner and easier to understand. So when we've got to apply uh, specific uh, effects, uh, we will be apply or, or, or you know, EQ, we'll be applying them to groups or families. We can apply like reverb to the high, low, uh, high, long strings, or we can compress the mid percussion or the high percussion or all the low percussion. Um, so, um, Back, you know, back in the composing project, we would have to do it track by track, or we would have to use the group, uh, you know, bus. So this step, it's not about you know fixing mistakes or fixing you no know, like uh, fixing problems that we did, uh, the, the mistakes that we did during the composing. It's just um, you know based on a, in a good arrangement, a good uh, synchestration. Um, the mixing is gonna make it sound just a little bit better. It's gonna enhance it. It's gonna uh, maybe making it a little bit wider, a little bit more cleaner, and uh, it's gonna enhance some of the good things. Uh, we aren't we aren't talking about very complex uh, mixing techniques here. It's gonna be very simple. Orchestral mixing uh, relies on very simple, you know mixing techniques we're going to be talking about EQing, automation, a little bit of percussion, a little bit of compression but again this is orchestral music so everything that we do again it's going to be very simple mixing techniques but also very subtle very very subtle uh, when approaching mixing orchestral music so just a tiny tiny bit of EQ, tiny bit of compression adding specific amount of reverb not too much and uh, that's the main concept when we are mixing orchestral music. We aren't gonna we aren't gonna add like five dBs when EQ like in the high frequencies for the strings or we aren't compressing more than two or three dBs for the percussion. Uh, sometimes we will hear tracks that are very very compressed, especially uh, trailer tracks. But you know if you wanna keep dynamics, the, the natural orchestral dynamics, we will better it's gonna be better to, to be very subtle. Okay, let's go step by step and let's see what we did. Usually we will have automation, then we will open a little bit, uh, we will widen a little bit some instruments and sections. Sometimes we may need to EQ some sections, sometimes to add a little bit more brightness or gain definition, uh, get rid of some frequencies that don't help. Uh, you know, whenever possible, it's a good idea to use um, analog emulation type of plugins to, you know, to bring that analog flavor to that orchestral track that we are mixing completely in the box in our computer. And then finally, we will add sometimes a little bit of reverb. Let's go step by step and uh, we will see just some tracks. We can see everything here would be a uh, very, very long video, but we will uh, we'll, uh, see the most important, the more important ones. Most of the most of the tracks will have uh, automation. Uh, there are three types of automation. We've got the fluctuation, uh, rebalance, and micro counterpoint type of uh, automation. This section here, so you can see how there is a, a little bit of movement here. It's fluctuation, and it just adds a little bit of life and makes it brief. Then here uh, we can see. Uh, you know, swells up and down, helping dynamics, but also we have a little bit of fluctuation. The easiest way to do this is using a control surface that allows us to grab the fader and record physically, record that fluctuation. Uh, this type of automation works great for long strings, long movements, uh, but long notes in general. Um, 
So basically the idea is grabbing, grabbing the fader and moving it up and down fast. Uh, very, very subtle. We are talking about half dB up and down. It, we, can, we can't even tell the difference really uh, of that fluctuation for one track, but when we put them all together, somehow it uh, you know it adds a little bit of variation and makes it feel a little bit more alive. It adds that subtle thing that it's there when a musician is performing live and it's not there when you know when they record those static notes for the creation of the sample library. Anyway, when you put all this automation together, you've got a much more organic mix that evolves throughout the queue. We can see a little bit of rebalancing type of automation. That's uh, something that can help sometimes if uh, we've got uh, a section or a note sometimes that it was a little bit too loud when we were, compos when we were composing we didn't pay attention to. Um, and now we can bring it down or bring it up. Let's, uh, let's hear that for the horns. You can clearly see that again for the choir. So we've got uh, fluctuation automation, we've got the rebalancing as well, and uh, we've got uh, automation for adding dynamics. And finally, we would have the automation for micro counterpoint. Basically, it's gonna make it easier to understand what's going on musically speaking. We may uh, enhance when the you know with the we may enhance some parts and bring down some others maybe the horns when they come in we want we, we want to make sure that they sound a, a little bit more while bringing down the staccato violins you know in the when the horn melody goes down we, we may want to enhance the strings you know to tell the audience hey take a listen to the strings and now bringing down the strings and bringing up the 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 horns again it is what the orchestra would naturally do and they do they do it so well and it is so hard to do with samples so again it's just enhancing that musicality within the arrangement let's take a listen to this so we've got horns green coming in with the percussion hits and then strings yellow we're just adding a little bit of a space at the beginning of each horn note and musically the the strings already stop there for the horns so we can hear is so so we can easily hear the horns but with automation we're enhancing that so horns with percussion coming in very simple it's not fancy at all. We haven't used any plugin or anything like that. But just with automation, we're helping the mix a, a lot more than uh, with any other plugin that we can insert. But anyway, we, the plugins, uh, they're also important. So as we've said, uh, when we are mixing, what we'll do is uh, automation, opening a little bit, weakening, EQ, and reverb. A little bit of compression sometimes. Let's see the high strings and let's see what plugins we have. We just muted uh, the reverb and EQ. The first thing that we did was opening the strings a little bit, weakening uh, using S1 and uh, opening the mix for the strings, weakening them works great because uh, when they record the strings, usually, well, they'll record them in surround. They'll have the decatree set of mics, three mics on top of the conductor. Then they'll, they'll have the wide mics, which is far left and far right. And then finally, they'll have the surrounds. But um, other than the, than the surrounds, for the five main mics, the decatree plus the wide mics, 
when they record it using that technique, uh, it's gonna they're gonna get a very wide type of sound. Now, uh, when we are using sample libraries, if we are composing in a stereo, when we bring that surround uh, recording into into stereo, the the effect is that the the mix is gonna narrow down a little bit for those sections, for the closer sections, like the strings. Then for the those sections that are a little bit farther away, that uh, openness type of uh, feel, it's not that big. So when we go from 5.1 or 7.1 to stereo, it's not as noticeable, the effect of uh, it narrowing down a little bit. So uh, opening the strings, opening those sections that are closer to the Decatrian whites uh, helps a lot. And uh, it works great, uh, but something subtle. So you can see 1.5, something like that. Let's see, let's see the effect. This would be the natural sound. We could open it a little bit to, to see the difference. Let's start super narrow. But again, we will go for subtle settings. Let's see the difference. You can see when it's active, we've, we've got a little bit more of sonic way to the sides. Works great with the strings. So next thing that we did uh, was EQ. Uh, when we are EQing, we can EQ with any plugin. Not that big of a difference. I I generally prefer using uh, analog emulation type of plugins that, that, that I've worked with them in the past and that I know because I want to go for that same sound. But it's it's a very very subtle difference. Uh, we can use any EQ. Um, we could we could use the uh, stock EQ from from the R sequencer. It would get the same effect. So it's not really needed to work with a very specific plugin. But basically, what we've done here is because it's uh, strings like high strings section that that does, doesn't really have that much of the low end information. So what we've done here is. Um, cutting all the frequencies, that, that won't hurt. So that, that's what we've done here. And then we've cut it a little bit around 300. You know, to the left, we're I'm just visually showing you what we've done with the analog plugin. But uh, don't uh, we haven't we haven't applied this twice. It's just again for for graphically see what we've done in the analog plugin. And finally, we've added a little bit of those high frequencies and cutting a little bit around ten. It may seem a little bit complex, but again, very very subtle. We are adding half dB, dB and a half, something like that. Uh, so we are adding a little bit of high end, but getting rid of the uh, irritation in that area here. So it goes for uh, you know adding a little bit of high end, but still making it sound soft. Generally, what we will what we will wanna do it's it's better cutting than adding. It's always better shaping the sound than adding frequencies. Again, um, usually what we will do when EQing is finding those uh, frequencies that aren't helping and cutting them a little bit. It's about finding the frequency. Uh, high Q. Again, find the frequency. Once we find the frequency that's that's battering, that's not helping. Trying to find the irritation frequency. Once we found it, we can bring it down a tiny bit. Never more than three dBs minus three dBs, and then opening Q again just to make a soft cut. It's subtle, but uh, we get the effect that we want. Uh, that the cue that we've seen previously, uh, we've done it with this plugin. It's an emulation of a NIF EQ to give that analog flavor. Activate it. 
deactivated. It's a little bit of a brighter sound, maybe a little bit thinner because uh, of the low frequency cuts, which that's going to help in the forte mix. And yeah, maybe a little bit softer because we, we cut it around 10k. Anyway, and finally, a little bit of reverb. Now here we've added a lot, lot, lot of reverb. That's too much most of the times for orchestral music. Um, that we've used this reverb as an effect for this track to really set uh, that that line in the in the foreground. That would be fifty percent. Usually, we would that would be in this range for orchestral music uh, with this plugin. Something like uh, five ten percent adding uh, reverb because most of the libraries they already sound big and the, with reverb because they got recorded in big rooms so when we are adding an uh, artificial algorithmic digital reverb we don't need to add that much so it's something subtle in this case though uh, we added a lot as an effect to really set this uh, melodic line very in the background again this is not going to sound uh, like realistic orchestral we are trying to enhance the uh, sonic spectrum and enhance the orchestral sound and creating more depth. Um, as a general rule, uh, long notes will accept more reverb than the short notes, and high frequent, like high long notes, will accept a lot, lot of reverb. Short notes, we don't want to add that much reverb, as we know. Uh, so low shorts, short strings, for example, or long, uh, low short notes, we don't want to have that much reverb. As we go higher in register, we can add a little bit more reverb, and especially if we are talking about the long notes, then we can add uh, much more. Now, in this case, again, it's too much, but it's more of an effect to add more depth. Let's see the effect. <laughs> But generally, we would see a reverb something like like this one, for example, uh, for the brass. That's more common. That's a little bit of uh, it's it's a faster decay and the mix is much lower. It does what it's supposed to do, which is putting together, blending the different orchestral sections and enhancing, making it sound a little bit bigger, the mix. Generally, with reverb, we will cut the low frequencies to avoid muddiness, um, especially with low instruments. Uh, we want clarity and avoid muddiness in that mid low end. This reverb is quite warm because uh, we didn't need to add more brightness to the to the brush, which already sounded that way. Let's take a listen. So those would be some of the basic concepts. Uh, to, um, to add something more, we will talk about uh, compression for percussion, very subtle compression that's gonna cut some transients and it's gonna help blending the non-orchestral per uh, percussion with the orchestral percussion. Um, so it's just compressing dynamic a little bit while keeping the punchiness of the percussion. very subtle, but it helps uh, controlling dynamics compression sometimes as well with uh, percussive synths, uh, just again to cut uh, some of those transients that will conflict with the uh, more organic sound of the orchestra. 
So that would be it. Let's see the mastering process. 